In this video, I'm going to show you how I made two angel wing pieces of wall art using DIY paints, paint and frosting. So this is the star of the show in case you haven't heard the news. Creating texture is so easy with this product. You mix it in with DIY paint. Here, I'm showing how I use the IOD blade and put the texture on. Then, I stamped kindest regards into the texture to create a relief. Then I take my angel wings and I apply my pre-made texture paste with the blade. The, my first layer, I put it pretty thin and I just make sure that I cover it completely. Then I go back and I add lots of texture by troweling it on thicker in some places, thinner in some, and I follow the lines of the angel wings. When you make your thickening agent paste, you're gonna want to seal it in something that's airtight. You'll be able to use this for days. And then you lift up your stencil slowly. Make sure you lift it up and there it is. Now you're gonna wanna clean it off. Typically, I like to clean off my stencil on a board so that this way I'm ready to go on a future project with a textured piece because a lot of texture paste is still on my, on my stencil. I take my silicone blade and I wipe off as much as I can, putting it back in the container. And then after I'm done, I go ahead and I clean it with a baby wipe as best as I can. You don't want to put this in your sink because you don't want this going down your pipes. You'll be able to see here just how much stencil um, remains or how much paste remains on the stencil. That would have been so much better on a board. But here you can see the texture and the layers and how it varies because of how I applied that second coating. And if you want it more, you could have done a little bit more or even let it dry and put more on. I like to paint in my Ray Stencil Angel Wings, and I do that by using the same exact color. Here I used White Swan, and I also create some feathery, wispy texture using my paintbrush along the sides so that it looks complete. And I just use a regular artist brush and apply the paint and then also along the sides I just wisp it out going in the shape of the angel wings. I stamp PS 119 which stands for Psalm 119 and it just hit me that I meant to do Psalm 91. However, Psalm 119 is actually one of my favorite psalms and I read it often and I think I used it in one of the previous um, things, but I use IOD um, stamp in stone gray. I still can't get over that I did that. I guess the Lord wanted me to stay on Psalm 119. That's it. That's all I can say. And I use the typesetting stamp to um, put that on. I take some golden ticket that I had in a little tub and I splatter it everywhere. Now I had done that previously. The background is aviary with a little bit of white and then I troweled on that white uh, thickening paste that I created and then I also had put some golden ticket behind it. So I wanted to add a little bit more and so I did that. Then I wax it with clear wax and the reason that I use clear wax on my angel wings is for the next step. Once I have it totally covered, I go ahead and I add one of my favorite little secret ingredients. It's mica powders. And it works great with the wax.
Now this mica powder that I'm using is fine. I go ahead and I put a white first, which gives you like a pearlescent look. And I just sprinkle it all over the wings. And then I take a little bit of gold and I sprinkle it in areas as well. Then I take an artist brush that's dry and I just start rubbing it into the wax all over the angels. And then also I end up putting some in the green areas just to give an overall wonderful look of just shining glory. It just really sets it off and makes the angel wings so unique. I love doing that in all of the angel art that I create. And a little bit of the mica powder goes a long way. And when I add my my next layers that you could see, I'm creating shimmer all around the angel wings and it just really, really makes it super, super special. And just, I love it. I just love the way that it turned out. This is probably one of my favorite ones. A lot of times I will use um, Iron Orchid Designs Air Dry Clay. I'm gonna show you that here in a second, but look at the shimmer. You really can see it up close and appreciate all of that extra oomph. It just takes it up a notch. So here is the finished piece. I just love it. Don't you love it? I hope that you'll be encouraged to create some angel wing art. I, each one that I make, I make them totally different and I usually use a lot of texture, a lot of different layers of textured and raised stencils and washes over it. It's a process and I, this one, it really is one of my favorites. Comment below and let me know what you think about it. All of the products can be found on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. And here's a close up of just the wings with the stamp. And you can see how I layered that golden ticket underneath. So I splattered it above and under, and I, I love that look too. And this particular piece was created on tempered board that I usually get at Home Depot. It's an eight by four sheet, and it's perfect for wall art, chalkboards even, and I use this for a lot of big signs to make them a little bit more lightweight. You see that shimmer? Whew, I love it. And even though I have white on white, you can really distinguish between the two. So this is my other angel wings that I've, I've created in the past. It's a different stencil. You can see the shape of the feathers are totally different. And a lot of times I'll incorporate the feathers and wings mold on top of the actual layered chunky look of the raised stencil. And then I'll even put like something in the center, like a clasp or and and then even like to create like a shoulder with the acanthus mold. I've done flowers before. I've done the floor de lis. I've done different ones right there in the middle on the top and it makes it special. So let's go on to sign number two. This is another repurposed sign that I had created lots of texture with. I just used boho blue and white for my background. Then I take my textured paste that I created, a custom color with boho blue, vintage linen, gravel road, and mint chip and of course the paint frosting now this particular one is not as thick as the other one it's still very very glossy and wet and so you have to be careful when it is wet because you can uh, have some bleed through which i did have a little bit of bleed through 
but since it's my background texture I was okay with it I just go ahead and I put it through this wall stencil it's called vintage wallpaper I believe it's by posh uh, pigment I bought it from Mara Le Fay of vintage retail therapy and as soon as I saw it I knew I wanted it just for these uh, angel wing projects that I do and look at how gorgeous the detail of this stencil I absolutely love it and then again clean it with a baby wipe be very careful with this intricate design that you don't mess up your stencil next I put my angel wing this one I just did one wing and I put it in the center and I'm using a white I think it's white swan white swan textured paste and again the first layer it's a thin layer and then your second layer you go ahead and you add more texture and more definition and you vary it it just makes it a lot more interesting Now you can choose to do a whitewash before you put your angel on um, if it's because the contrast is really, really great here. And so I toyed with what I was going to do, but I was I did some of this on some Facebook lives and I was trying to get the technique down to show people how to do this. And I didn't really know what I wanted. I knew that I wanted the background to be blue, but I wasn't really sure. So I would recommend if you want to tone it down, do your whitewash before you paint over your stencil or even before you even create the stencil. Again, make sure you go with the flow of the feathers because it does show up. I love it. I love it. I love this, this stencil. This is a JRV stencil by Mara Le Fay. I wasn't sure if I was gonna paint it in but I went ahead and I painted it and I did my wispy look and I think it just looks so much better that way and I did a whitewash with a with a different white and I watered it down and I used a chip brush to create a light glowing effect so it looks like it's coming from above and behind the angel wings then I seal it with wax and then again I sprinkle the white mica powder all over and you really can appreciate it when you see it up close like I know you can't see it in this video but the shimmer is really just amazing I don't think I showed the video, but um, I went back and I added some, a little bit of the gold and a little bit of silver. And I added gold on the light rays. And I think that was a good decision because um, I stared at it for a while. But the gold mixed in with the silver shimmer really sets it off. And you can see it here in the finished piece. It warms up so it really does look like rays of light coming down behind it and above it. Let me know what you think about this angel art piece. Both of these are actually going to be available. If you are interested, let me know. If you're local, they're going to be at Now and Then, 575 Madison in McCoy Avenue in Madisonville. Thank you for watching this video.